Step 5. Create Entries Now we can start creating entries. Let's start by simply creating shared credentials. Let's pretend that Downhill Company allows you to use its single credentials across your whole domain. So basically, your user will have access to that credential. So Downhill User, let's call the domain the same and enter the password. So this is a credential entry and it will appear under the folder I created. Now let's create an RDP session for the domain controller and name it DC. The name will automatically be copied in the computer field. You can change it, but this is the default value. Now, rather than specifying the credential in here, I could be using a link to the credential entry I just created. But if you remember, Downhill allows me to use the same set of credentials for its whole domain. And in that case, I'll set up the RDP session to use inherited credentials. You will see how all of this work in a few moments. Now let's create an exchange server session and I will simply use the inherited credentials again. So you see, sessions under a folder. When you set them to use inherited credentials, it will go up to the parent folder and will acquire the credential from there. That is why on the folder, in fact, you can assign a credential entry. So let's assign my downhill credential entry at the folder level. And with my session being set to use inherited credential, it will use the credential that it is tied to to the top level folder. You could also assign it to a parent folder. The session will go up to its ancestor until it founds one with a credential value. Now let's take a look at Telemark. That customer does not allow for a single credential across its whole domain. Therefore, we do not have a credential entry to share with its team, so we will need to work around that. The mechanism is in fact related to the private vault. The private vault will allow you to create any type of entry, but is related to your user account. It is private to you and no one else can have access to it. Let's create a credential for David at Telemark and enter the username and the password. We can see here the credentials that is private to David since it's in your private vault. No one else will have access to it. So if I go back here for Telemark and create the same DC session. But I can't have access to my private vault here because this would be shared with my whole team. So let's leave it at default. Meaning that there is currently no credential link to the session. The trick is to use the edit entry user specific settings to override the credential that is stored in that session. Remember that there is currently no credential set. Now, if you see that the menu is grayed out, verify if the allow user specific settings rights is enabled. So to set the credential on my session, activate the override credentials and select the private vault credential entry. It will grant me access to my private vault and you will see now I have access to my credential. Again, this is only for the currently login account. It is not shared at all. No one else in the system can double click on that session and have access to the David credential that was just linked to the session. Every user in the system must do the same step. Go in their private vault, create the credential and use the user specific settings override at that session level. If like for Downhill, you have a shared credential, but one of your staff has a higher privilege account, they could use the user specific settings at the folder level. There is less choice of what you can override, but the credentials are there and you could override with your private vault credential at the folder level. So if you have session using the inherited credentials, they will work transparently using this mechanism. I do have sessions for my customer. I have two methods of using credentials. One with a share credential and one with a share credential with your team. Let's quickly create a few more entries in the internal infrastructure. The company does allow for sharing of credentials. So let's create a credential for a technician named Ted working at Windjam 
and enter his password. So I have my credential entry. Now let's create our domain controller, RDP session, and link that session to the TED credential. Now, if you remember, we are the sole user of this data source. So let's go create new users. Let's click on user and then the plus. We'll create Ted, who is a member of our service desk. That team have more rights than other users. Now let's go in permission and you can see my two security groups and I can define Ted's right for each security group. Add edit and delete permission in a security group or like master trigger that you have to enable first before you have the right to grant security group permission. So the service desk have a view permission on the Windjam structure. And I want Ted to also be able to launch session. Ted is the administrator of the customer group, so we, he will have full rights there. We should always check the option to deny entry in root folder. The root folder is our virtual session folder. We do not wish for anyone else to create a root level folder since folder that has no security group is deemed public, meaning that anyone that has access to our system will see all the public sessions. So it is a best practice to always enable that option. Now let's create another user. King working for the help desk, so enter his name, description and password. I want to give him rights to only view what is in the customer group and no permission at all on the Windjam group. So there is no need to enable the add, edit, delete right since I am not granting him those rights on either groups. Let's play around with that and see how those permissions will apply to the data source. We will create another data source for our users. So let's click on the wheel and use the duplicate feature. Now let's change the user to Ted and enter his password. And let's do the same thing for King. Duplicate the data source, king, and enter his password. Now I have three data sources to show you how all those permissions work and what these users would see on their site. So let's take a look at what Ted would see. If you remember, we give him full rights on everything in the customer folder and as you can see, I can view the sessions and edit them. Now, if I try the same thing with a session from the Windjam group and try to edit a session, you will see that you get a warning saying that he does not have the proper right. You have the view permission on them, but can't edit them. If we now take a look at what King would see, you will notice that the Windjam group has just completely disappeared since King has no right on that group. Now, for the customer group, he can view the session but can't modify them. The menu to edit will simply be disabled, but he will still have the right to launch session. Remember that it is extremely important to have security groups applied to your folder since everything that is not protected is deemed public. Therefore, everybody can use and edit those sessions. Thank you for watching. You can find out more information on our online help or on our forum.